today, we embark on our biggest overlanding journey yet. As we cross the whole province of British Columbia in our purpose-built Super Forester. Where we will be making our way from Calgary to the coastal city of Vancouver. Over these next two days, we will travel through countless mountain passes and climates and camp at some of the best spots yet. This is one epic overlanding trip you aren't going to want to miss, so let's get started. What is up and welcome back to another adventure. Today's adventure or the next three days of adventuring is gonna take us right to the coast, right to Vancouver. Because today I am driving, or I'm starting the drive, to drive down to Vancouver for my graduation for my master. So I thought, might as well take the Forester down there and do a little bit of overlanding on our way. With that being said, we're gonna be doing this trip in three days. So the first leg of the journey today is from Calgary to Revelstoke. Revelstoke, we're gonna be staying the night and then from Revelstoke, I don't know where we're going because we're gonna just kind of figure out as we go. We're gonna be taking the main highway, Highway 1, all the way from Calgary to Vancouver because this will get us there, well, the fastest and it will be a nice drive. The reason we're doing this in one long video is because, well, some of our other BC adventures are a little more taxing, a little more adventurous. We're going up mountains, we're going on to glaciers and stuff and that's why we usually divide those in because those videos are 20 minutes on itself. This time, because we're doing a lot of highway driving, we'll be doing a lot of driving on Highway 1, is we'll be condensing this into one video. So this video will take us all the way from Calgary, where we just left, to Vancouver. So that is the plan, and as you can see, we're on the highway right now, making our way to Revelstoke. We still got four and a little bit hours left, so we still got quite a ways, and well, we're just just getting out of the prairies now, so we're not even in the mountains yet. And well, that's the plan. So we're gonna keep on making our way uh, down the highway and see what we can find. As I said, I'm in no big, big rush. We're doing it over three days, and it's about, I wanna say 1,300 kilometers. Don't quote me on that. It's about 13 hour drive if you drive straight, depending on how fast you go. So by doing it in three days, we kind of have a nice little break and we can explore a few more things. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Obviously, we drove this road about a hundred million times at this point. I drive this like 20 times going skiing, so nothing real interesting here yet. So we'll get farther into the mountains and then we'll see if we can find some place to take a break, maybe have a snack and keep on moving. And as we started moving farther west, the prairies that we called home quickly rose above us, turning into epic rocky mountains. But on this trip, this was just the beginning. And not long into today's drive, we started passing many of the all familiar sites that I often take for granted, including places people have only dreamed about visiting, like Lake Louise, Banff, and Canmore. The mountains, now high above us, marked our location, passing Cascade, Rundle, Temple, and many more. And just like that, the Banff National Park was in our rearview mirror and in front of us lay the beautiful British Columbia, where we stopped to rest our legs, get a few photos, and then got back on the road. But you know what's one of the best things about having your whole camp kitchen, everything on your car, is you can go ahead, pull off a place like this, grab yourself a snack, and enjoy it in a place like this. But anyways, there is hundreds, 
of those kind of points of interest along this section of road that we're driving today. There is probably five or six that I was like, oh, I'm gonna stop at, and I missed them or whatever, but we probably stopped at, I think we're, that one was probably number four. I'm just taking my time enjoying the view and a lot of um, these places I haven't checked out before, so why not? We only have four hours to go. Usually when I'm driving this road, it's like eight hours out to like the shoe shop area or something. But this time, since I'm doing it in smaller chunks, we can enjoy it a little bit more and check it out. So I've checked out a lot of those stops here and there. But other than that, this road is pretty much just a fast highway. Obviously, there's people going way faster than me because they're not a fully loaded Forester. Um, in 2004, a fully loaded Forester, but they are um, all kind of keeping a similar pace. And as you see, the roads are really quiet right now. It's a Sunday evening, so that's probably why everyone's going home, not going out, but it's nice to see that the roads are a little bit quieter for our trip. One of the weird things I have noticed though, and maybe you guys can point out why, I have no idea why, is there is like 25% of the cars I've seen are rental cars today. They are Alberta rental cars, they got Alberta plates, and but they've got like the rental plate. And I, never seen that many before so if anyone knows let me know this is as I said the start of June that we're doing this so it's weird that we're seeing that kind of stuff now but who knows maybe there's something I'm missing anyways as I said we're gonna continue on we're about halfway a little over halfway now um, and it's more of just this cruising down the highway kind of enjoying the views you can't complain like the prairies are get boring after a while honestly <laughs> you can only look at the flat ground ground and farmland for so long before you, you get bored, but having these kind of mountains um, a little bit back there when we're going between the Banff and the Yuhu National Park, just where I crossed over to BC, another place I took a break. It was really tight in there, so you were like looking straight up to check out the mountains, and it's nice because it's still early June, as I said. We're still getting a lot of snow up in the mountains, which usually, as I said, I do this in the midsummer. So when it's midsummer, there is a lot less snow so it's kind of cool to see the snow cap peaks but anyways we're almost at the golden that's where we're gonna fill up with gas I'm at just over half a tank and we've done 250 kilometers so not the best of fuel but that's that's what happens when you have a rooftop tent no front bumper lights all this stuff it just it all adds up and you don't get the greatest fuel economy but I'm not gonna complain because the Forester is doing great it is a lot quieter now with the maintenance items we've done and yeah it's just overall a good ride so we'll continue through we're gonna be going through Golden getting gas and then going through Rogers Pass which is always fun see how much snow there is up there and then eventually as we come down Rogers Pass going into Revelstoke and finding a place to stay for tonight so let's keep on going and as we push farther into British Columbia the mountains only got grander now so steep that even the toughest vegetation couldn't hold on Here, there was nothing. After fields, all we passed was trailheads and service points. But that was a beauty in it. As we made our way through the Canadian Rockies, we grew closer to the new point of civilization, Golden. And after making our way into the Kicking Horse Valley and over the massive bridge, I knew we were close. But there was only one thing in our way, construction. And after making our way through that at a snail's pace, we finally descended into the mountain town of Golden, where we stopped for a quick fill up and kept moving. With a fresh tank of fuel, we were ready to take on the last big push tonight, Rogers Pass. And with this pass came quite a bit of elevation gain. Although it wasn't an issue for the Forester, it just meant we were limited to the slow lane on the climb.
As we neared the summit, we could feel the temperature drop and see the snow that was once on the top of the mountains now beside us. Up here, we were one with avalanche terrain, giving us some great tunnels to go through as we neared the summit. Bringing back the childhood whimsy that I felt as we passed through these during our family vacations. And once we breached the summit, it was a gravity assisted run back down as the sun started to set. But before long, we crossed the bridge into Revelstoke and turned onto a side road that would take us to the site for the night. And after spending some time finding the access road, we finally turned onto some dirt and made our way towards the river. And well, we made it to camp. I had a little bit of a struggle finding this place because even my backcountry road maps wouldn't even show me the road around here. So I kind of just had to go dive um, into the roads and eventually find one that wasn't gated. They're all gated along here, but this is the one place that you can camp. So yeah, check this out. Literally right beside the water, which is flowing fairly fast right now because it is still kind of runoff season. And then, Look at that right there. Beautiful view of the mountains. So it is kind of late because I took a long time finding this place. It is already 8.45. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get the tent set up and then we're gonna get cooking some food so we can eat. But with that being said, it's time to go ahead and make dinner. So my first store is pretty packed right now. As you guys saw, I've done a few little things here and there. I added some more storage to the top of this guy, as well as just packing some stuff on the racks, as well as I used a little bit of netting here to add some more storage. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the kitchen and start cooking. Good thing we got here when we did it. As you can see, it's already getting dark because it is, well, 9 p.m. Summer is so, so nice. Um, I think the longest day is June 21st. So we are right around the longest day, so we'll have sunlight probably till 10 something. But I am tired from the drive and kind of getting ready these last couple days, so I'll be hitting the sleeping bag early. But just want to show you guys the new and improved kitchen setup. Uh, one other thing I did add was these black diamond lights, um, Mojo I think they are. They have little hooks, but they're also magnetic. And guess what else is magnetic? The top of your, or your hatch on your car. So you can have a nice little light for cooking and cleaning. As well as you guys seen the faucet, make sure if you haven't seen the video where I have put a giant water bladder in the back of my car, check that out because that's pretty cool. And then I'm cooking with cast iron. I finally got a cast iron pan, so I'm happy to hear, I'm happy to put that to use. But I'm gonna finish making food because, as I said, I'm extremely hungry. And then I think we're gonna lose the last little bit of sun and then we'll wrap up tonight. As I said, this video will continue on if you're wondering why it is kind of longer than just the end here is because. As I said, we're doing a lot of road tripping and not a lot of overlanding and kind of off-roading. So I kind of wanted to make this more condensed video format for you guys to see the trip from Calgary to Vancouver in three days. So yeah, I just can't get over this view. I, I'm going to have to return here um, just for a camping trip because look at that mountain. It's like perfect in, the, in line with the like river and we're just right on the river. And there's another like waterfall over there so I can hear that. Yeah, so you can just hear that. So that's gonna be nice because you got a little bit of white noise. But yeah, I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> and well, we're in the tent now. I was gonna end the video down there, but it was really dark. It's weird to see how your eyes adjust, but well, the camera doesn't. So what you think is only a little bit of light, um, or there's still a little bit of light, yeah, the camera sees none of it. It's, it's pitch black. So I couldn't really do much there. The camera was working with what it had in that little light there. It's great for at night when your eyes adjust, but it's not good for when your camera is trying to take video. These lights in the tent um, at max brightness, they have a fair bit of light. As you can see, it's like daylight in here. So yeah, this is usually, I guess, where we'll be ending each night on our trip. But yeah, that was a good 
five hours so we actually did a little bit more today just because I wanted to get to this area next one or the next day I have to look at my map but tomorrow we're gonna probably do four or five hours I think and we're gonna get into a, a kind of a new area that I haven't explored yet so maybe we'll do a little bit of exploration before we find a new campsite for the night but that's gonna be it for this first day of our three day trip to Vancouver. So I'll see you guys in a little bit in the morning. And good morning. Welcome to a beautiful June day in Revel Silk. It's actually like eight, I think eight right now. The sun came up four hours ago. I tried to get some photos of it, but it was a little too early for that. And then we kind of just sat here until the sun hit the tent. When the sun hit the tent, it started to warm up a lot. Um, as you see, I'm not wearing my fleece anymore because, well, it's already, I think, probably 20 degrees at eight, so it's gonna be a hot, another hot one today, so I might have to jump in the river quickly before we head out of here, but got the camp kitchen out, having some breakfast, and enjoying the amazing view of, I need to know what mountain that is, I can't remember, I need to look at my map, but yeah, enjoying the view, cooking some breakfast, and then, as I said, I'm probably gonna jump to the river before I go, but before that, I gotta. We still. I'm still working. We still got stuff going on a flat four off road, so I gotta send some emails off, and then we can probably go in the river and then head out. And as I said today, we're gonna try to make it to Merritt and find a camp spot around that area. So let's go ahead and have some. Food. And well, we've had a change of plans. As you can see, the tent is packed up because it got really windy and gusty all of a sudden. It's kind of calmed down, but it's still a little bit windy. So. With that being said, rather than not jump in the freezing cold river, I thought about it. We're actually going through the shoe shop region very soon. And as you guys know, on some of my older videos, about two years ago, we went and uh, checked out the shoe shop because I've been there for every summer for probably 18 years. So I did, wanted to go camping there, so I did. And well, we're gonna drive right through there. So I think it'd be only fitting if we took a swim in the shoe shop. Also, there's a really good ice cream place I want to check out, so we're gonna to have to do that too. But with that being said, we're gonna then not swim here. And I packed, as obviously I packed up the tent, so really we're just ready to go. I've sent off the emails and answered a couple inquiries, so I'm just gonna put the rest of the Forster together, get some stuff charging, and then we're gonna head out of here. Uh, there's a little bit of a trail. There's one little rough section that's um, kind of fun, as you guys saw coming in. We'll get some shots of that hit the highway, and then head to the shoe shop region, and then what we're gonna be doing is, as I said, to Merritt. I think I found a campsite I wanted to check out in Merritt, so that's kind of the area we're gonna be going to. So yeah, let's go ahead and hit the trail and the road. So, we headed back up the trail and towards the pavement. where we were quickly reminded of how close we were to civilization as we crossed paths with other visitors. Now, back on the pavement, we quickly make kilometer after kilometer into the now much more timid Rocky Mountains. But just as quickly as we got into the valley, we got out of it as it opened up into the Shushwap region, an area where we were familiar with. And as we made our way towards the lake, the mountains seemingly turned into tree-covered hills. And well, we're two kilometers away from Sycamus, so what I think I'm gonna do is Gonna grab some ice cream because you gotta grab ice cream when you're in Sycamus. And then I think we can either swim right at Sycamus, there's the beach um, right in the city, or I'm gonna take a look at my map and see if there's any along the way. Um, kind of because you kind of go up the mountain, you kind of ride the mountain, the side of the, well, it's not really mountains anymore, they're kind of just hills, but ride that for a little bit and then eventually you kind of dive down before you get into Chase. Yes, there's a city called Chase, I'll stop at it and then um, continue past True Shop Lake. So I'm going to see if we can kind of find a place there maybe that we can pull off and then we're not in the city, but we'll see as we go along. But as it goes, plans change. 
And due to the early season, we could tell Sycamus was far from the bustling summer town that I'm used to. And, well, because of that, the ice cream place was closed. And with the high water levels and wind, the beach wasn't looking very favorable to swim in either. So, we pushed forwards out of Sycamus and onto Highway 1, up onto the hillside that overlooked the lake. From here, not only did we get a great view of the lake, but we also got to enjoy the twists and turns that followed the rocky shoreline. And after driving for a bit, we once again stopped to see if we could get a swim. But we found the same thing, a high and windy lake. So we kept on moving with the hopes of eventually finding a place to swim. Now back on ground level, we worked our way towards, then through Salmon Arm before heading out of the region and towards Kamloops. And well, the wind keeps on following us. We're now in Chase. Um, and I actually have never been through here. It's a really small town, there's not a lot. But as you can see, there's another lake behind us, and it's actually, I believe, the little shoe shop. So it's kind of cool because it kind of just connects to the big shoe shop. And there's still no beach here, so the issue I think is, well, it's too early. It's Ju June 3rd or 4th or 5th, I don't know what day it is anymore. But essentially, the water's still pretty high, so it hasn't evaporated and went down and drained through the river system yet. So it's not great for swimming. and. As you can see, it's really windy. No point in going swimming if it's windy and not even that hot. So I guess we might have to do that on our way back or during the shoe shop trip. But that being said, I just went ahead and I just parked at a park here in Chase, down by the water, and we're gonna cook up some food um, before we continue moving along. We've only got about two hours and it's like 1.32. It's exactly two, so we, we have quite a bit of time to still explore. I think Kamloops will be probably our next stop to check it out because it looks vastly different than what we are in right now, so we'll have to check it out then. And I mean, you can't argue about this is a pretty nice place to have lunch. But there's where we actually came down from. The highway is right there. And then we're gonna jump back on it and continue heading that way. And well, after lunch, we're leaving the city of Chase. No swimming. We still might be able to go swim uh, where we're gonna be staying tonight. There might be river access. As I said, I don't know exactly what these spots look like. I'm just pulling them up on my map and seeing there's a road and possibly a place to camp. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So we'll see, maybe we'll have a place to swim, a place to not swim. Besides that, as you can see, the terrain is getting less and less mountainous and more and more rolling hills. So it's kind of interesting to see as we went through like Rogers Pass and stuff, it was very, very hilly and very, well, hilly, very rock and ma rocky mountainy. That's definitely not a word, but it's a word now. It was very like steep, very like picturesque. And now we kind of get, once we get into the shoe shop, it's more of this like gentle rolling hill. And then I believe as we kind of go more west, we're gonna run into the Kamloops area, which as far as I know, is a little more dry. As that being said, I haven't driven it this early in the year, so it could be actually still pretty green. But I just remember going through there all the time and it just being absolutely brown with like dry kind of Montana-y vibes. So we'll have to see once we get there. But other than that, the Forester's been running great. I've been trying to keep it above half a tank, so I have been filling up every like 300 kilometers. And it, fuel economy is not bad actually. It's not great, but it's not bad. And then other than that, I'm just cruising along, listening to podcasts. And speaking of podcasts, shameless plug, Platform Off Road, mine and Austin's company. We have a podcast now, so if you're on a trip like me, go listen to it while you're on the way. I'll let you guys know. I don't know what the plan is. I did, as you guys saw, I had a plan to stop at Sick and Moose and get ice cream and swim in the shop. Neither of those worked. You kind of got to be 
or you gotta be very agile when you do these kind of trips because nothing's gonna go to plan. Just make sure you're prepared to kind of adjust and figure it out as you go. So yeah, there's there's my dead talk about overlanding. Be prepared, have fun. Anyways, we'll continue on. If I see anything interesting, I will definitely stop and let you guys know. Other than that, I'll probably see you near our campsite near Merritt. And while the morning wasn't going to plan, this afternoon was going to be the real test as we took on the Coquihalla. But first, we had to make it through the desert-like valley that led into Kamloops. Here, the mountains changed once again, now taking on the form of sandy hills that resembled Montana's northeastern climate. And once again, Changing the plans, we turned off the main highway and onto a side road in the hopes that we'd find something interesting. And while we didn't see anything interesting, it was a more engaging drive as it more closely followed the river and the farmsteads that sat on its shores. But it wasn't for long as we went through Kamloops and started the long and grueling climb up the Coquihalla. Thankfully, while it was long and definitely steep at times, we could sit in the slow lane and take our time. And as we reached the summit, or what felt like the summit, it was finally time to go for a swim. Because we were in BC, it didn't take us long to find a place to go swimming, even way up here. So we hit the access road, maybe got a little lost, and then finally located some water. And I would be lying if I didn't say it was a little bit cold. But it was quite refreshing after the many hours of driving. And it was a pretty interesting little lake to swim in. Well, the whole area was pretty interesting as we made our way back onto the highway. Up here, due to the much higher elevation, the climate was once again very different from what we had been through today. But that didn't last long as we started making our descent to where we would be spending the night, Merritt. And after making our way through a little town in the valley and heading back into the trees, we finally turned off the highway for good today and started scouting for our campsite. And after a few dead ends in this previously burnt forest and a bunch of occupied sites, we made our way through a small path and onto the beach. Somewhere where the RVs wouldn't be found. Finding a place right on the beach to stay for the night. And well, there we go. We found camp for the night. Check this place out. So it's kind of sandy, which is always nice camping on a beach, but it's kind of in this like river valley area. The highway is actually just up there, but it's in the river valley area. There's a nice calm spot that we can maybe go swimming in the morning. And then the river kind of just goes all the way around us. It's a really nice spot. I'm sure it's probably busier in the weekend, but there's a couple spots over there that have people and campers and one spot over there. But we even arrived a little bit early, I want to say, I think it's like 7.38. So that means that we might even be able to have a time to cook a meal as well as maybe even have a fire. So we can have class or category one fires, which mean essentially that we can have half a meter by half a meter, which is plenty. Um, as long as you have a fire ring and you're three meters away from any flammable things, such as the tree. So we would do it right where I'm standing. But yeah, so as I said, um, we'll go ahead, make some dinner, enjoy the view a little bit, and as you saw, I already got my swim in today, so we'll have to do a swim tomorrow. That lake up there where we were when we went swimming was actually like kind of up in the pass, so it was like super high altitude. Up there it was 17 degrees, right now it's 22 here, so the temperature was quite cool up there, but the lake was surprisingly warm. I don't think this river's going to be that warm tomorrow, so it'll be refreshing, a little morning dip, but yeah. I really like this spot. Another spot I've marked on my list to return because it is, you can't complain when you have a nice little 
beach camp where you can just park up right here. So let's have some dinner. Our food is ready and we got a fire going. So let's enjoy this and have something to eat. And there we go, another night on the river. Thankfully we had the fire this time because it actually is quite a bit colder than it was in Revelstoke, which is kind of surprising because usually Revelstoke is colder, but maybe it's just because we're near the coast or the temperature system's moving through. I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely colder and that fire was nice to keep us warm for a little bit. But that being said, it's time to go to bed because the sun gets up way earlier than I do and as I mentioned, I think I want to go to for a swim before we make the 250 kilometer um, tr distance to Vancouver where we will end up this video. So I hope you're enjoying the journey so far. We are almost there, but we still got one more day and a little bit on the road. So I think tomorrow we'll also check out a couple um, things here or there as we're making our way through to Vancouver because I know we go through Hope and stuff, but I'm not 100% sure. It'll probably just go like today's plan where we kind of just went off the rails and figured it out as we went. So I will see you guys in the morning. And well, good morning to the third day of driving from Calgary to Vancouver. So it's a little bit cold out. It's about 9.30 actually. And check out the view. This is such a great place to camp. I didn't hear the vehicles on the road at all last night. The only thing I heard was a bird going on for like an hour this morning at sunrise, which it's a little bit later than Revy. It's about 4.30 in the morning. Yay, still didn't get a sunrise photo but it was cold last night. So as you guys know, I have my minus 10 sleeping bag, which is perfect for this because it got down to, my forecast says five, and I believe it, it definitely got down to five because you know when the inside of your sleeping bag starts to feel a little cold to the touch, but it's not cold yet? Yeah, that's what, how I was feeling in the tent last night. Thankfully, the sun's out and it's warming up. It's still only like 13 degrees, so no swimming yet. I, I'm determined to go swimming this morning or before we pack up, but it's still pretty cold to do that because it's still only 9.30 and it's taking a while to warm up. But what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of enjoy this spot because, I mean, you can't complain. You're literally on like an outcrop of the river and eat some breakfast and then we can figure out the plan for today from there. As I said, we only have a couple hundred kilometers so it won't be too, too long, but I still want to check out some places on the way. So yeah, let's have some food. And well, there we go. We got breakfast done and we got the kitchen all folded up. I gotta say that compared to when we did the BC Central or South Central BC trip in 2021 with like the kind of ghetto setup, having this is so much of a difference. It's so nice to be able to fold it out, just cook everything, have a little prep area, have a sink. That sink is awesome. And then with our new faucet here, this faucet is absolutely amazing. If you guys don't know, go check out the video, probably a couple before this, where we actually went ahead and installed a faucet with a giant water tank in my wheel well. So it pumps it up and it has no issues pumping it. And you have so much water and you can kind of, don't have to deal with those big jugs, which is always a pain. But with that being said, it is extremely hot now in the sun if you're out of the wind. If you're in the wind, it gets a little, little um, cooler, but I think it's hot enough to go for a swim. So the plan now is to, as you can hear, someone's um, over there cutting deadfall, I'm guessing, because there's so much of it. But what we're gonna do is probably just tidy up a little bit more and then go for a swim, dry off, get the forcer ready, and then hit the road to Vancouver. So let's go ahead and do that. Definitely glacier water. Yeah, that's 100% glacier water. Oh, my feet are frozen already.
As you guys know, I've been in quite a few glacier lakes um, when we were in the Central PC trip as well as some other places, but that might be by far the coldest body of water we jumped into. And I guess that's why they call it Cold Water River. Maybe I should have taken a clue, but yeah, that is really cold. But I'm all cooled down now, so the plan is to essentially pack up and then hit the road. But before we could hit the highway, we first had to get onto it. So we traversed the same trail that we came in on before getting on the side road and eventually the highway. Being 1500 meters from sea level and going to sea level meant we had another opportunity to make our way downhill rather than up. And as we started making our way down the Coquihalla, the small mountains beside us grew bigger and bigger, until they now reminisce the Rocky Mountains, but without their jagged peaks. And well, besides that, the only other thing out here was construction, a lot of it. Not only did we have construction from the road repairs, that washed the road out a year ago, but also construction from the pipeline that seemingly followed beside the highway. But just as fast as it came, it went as we started to level off and see our first signs of civilization. I don't know if it's as cold as what we swam in today, but it's fresh. Well, I thought we could get closer to the uh, lake up there, but it's a uh, probably a kilometer and a half hike. And as much as I want to do it, we should probably keep moving, but I'm gonna grab a snack while we're here. And while we're cruising down the Coquihalla pretty good. So all that altitude in Merritt, where we're essentially like not very high compared to the mountains. Well, now the mountains are growing beside us and we're just cruising downhill. So this is kind of the path that we get to take on the way down here. It's not gonna, it's not bad, but it's not gonna be great um, on the way up. The Forester is not gonna like it, but that's kind of what we're gonna have to do to get back. Or we go the other way and we go south. I don't know. I'm, we'll think about it. But anyways, we are, I think, less than 200 kilometers away from Vancouver, only like 25 away from Hope, so we're getting into the kind of coastal region now. I have a feeling as we get closer and closer to Vancouver, it's gonna get busier and busier, and there'll be less fun stuff. And to make Coquihalla even more fun, it's construction and literally everywhere. So, as you guys saw back there, we had a quite a bit of like forest fire damage areas, and then as I said, they're flooded. Well, this Coquihalla Highway, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the roads and highways got washed out and bridges got washed out. Uh, it was when I was in Vancouver, so it was last year. I think it was September or the spring. One of the two. Um, a lot of stuff got washed out, so they're still rebuilding right now. It's crazy, like the bridge we just went right over, that's all brand new. We passed another bridge that they were rebuilding, so there's construction all over. And then I think they're putting in a pipeline right there. I'm not, I, We've crossed over it when we were going. Yeah, definitely, they're putting a pipeline right there. So there's construction literally everywhere. It goes from two lanes, single lane, two lane, single lane. So as I said, going up is gonna be a lot of fun when it's one lane up and you're being stuck behind trucks. But I guess that'll give us a break on the Forester because there's no way the Forester is doing 120. It's barely doing 120 downhill, so it's not doing 120 uphill. Once again, trying to keep things interesting, we turned off the highway and onto a side road that made its way through the forest before heading into town. And after making our way through Hope, we hit the road for the last stretch where the road finally flattened out as we made our way into the valley, where the mountains started to disappear in the rear view. But in front of us, it was leveling off with nothing more than farmland. And well, it was really starting to feel like Vancouver, we were still quite a ways away. So we pushed forwards, now out of the farmland and into the urban sprawl. 
where we caught up with the traffic as we made our way through city after city on the tree-covered highway before, out in front of us, our goal came into view. The city of Vancouver. And crossing over the bridge, we knew that we had to be close. So we made the final turn off the highway and into Vancouver. After almost two years after first visiting for school, I had finally made the cross-province trip myself. And well, we are in Vancouver. It's, um, as you can probably tell, a little more hectic and a lot less nature, but we are Almost to where I want to go. If you guys know where I want to go, well then, you guys have been watching the channel for a while. Because that means that you guys know that I went to the Center for Digital Media here in like Metro Vancouver for a year, doing my master's, and that is where we're going. Because as I said, I am officially graduating. So yeah, that is the plan, that is where I'm going, and we are almost there. I'm just in the last little part. I can see the East Van sign. If you know, if you're in Vancouver or know of the East Van sign, I am right by there. So that's where I'm heading. We just got one more turn to go and then we are here. Overall though, this journey has been a lot of fun. This is I think my longest solo journey I've done and I'm looking forward to doing plenty more because we will be doing flat four off road. We'll be doing a lot of stuff here with the Vancouver Subaru Club, which is awesome. A great group of people that I hope to meet. So I'm gonna be traveling back and forth a little bit more over the summer and obviously checking out some new spots because the spots we found were awesome, but I wanna find some new spots and maybe do the two days, maybe try it one day, I don't know. And also maybe get Austin on the trip, maybe get Adrian and kind of go from there. But that's what we have planned for this summer. We have a lot going on with regards to our trips as well as we have a lot going on just with flat four off road. So make sure you guys are following the channel because I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am. And well, this is where we're gonna wrap up the video because well, the Center for Digital Media is behind me and we have officially arrived. So I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did and look forward to all our future adventures. But as always, peace out and stay humble.